The most valuable commodity on earth today is data, how we make it, use it, move it, and protect it. My name's David McCall. Join me today for the QTS Experience. Hey everybody, Dwayne Wilcox with TK Elevators joining me today uh, on the QTS Experience. Dwayne, thanks for joining. We're here at the ATP Cares event out here at the beautiful uh, St. Ives Golf Course. You're looking very sporty today. It's kind of a vulgar display of power. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, uh, <laughs> it's great to be here and support such a great cause that ATP sponsors with Inspire EDU. And, and I'm happy to be spending time with you this morning. Well, it's my pleasure. It is. Uh, it's going to be a gorgeous day, and um, I envy you being out on the uh, on the golf course. Um, you're CIO at TK Elevator, and just before we went on air, I was running through some of the technology stuff that I'm curious about and really interested in. And you smiled and said, "That's cool," but um, and I loved where you were going with this, which is um, in your world. It's as much about the user experience and innovation as it is any particular technology. Why don't you uh, explain what you mean? Yeah, I mean, that's right. I mean, from a CIO standpoint, I mean, there's a lot of things that we're constantly working on digitizing in our business. There's, there's a lot of back office transformation going on, but the real exciting areas of innovation that are happening is we're seeing a convergence in our business from being a more of a traditional B2B customer to becoming more B2C, which means we're we're actually interacting more with the riders of our systems, mm. the elevators, escalators, jetways, you know, walkways, et cetera, that we produce. And there's a whole digital experience, you know, coming in, in that area. Mm. And, and we're using it to our advantage as well as to the customer's advantage. So if you can come, on to a, come into a building and the building recognizes you based on beacons or your phone technology or your wristwatch, mm. it knows where you want to go. Um, it can help guide you in the right path. It can even... Uh, a lot of our elevators now are equipped with uh, really cool digital screens. It looks like a mirror when you walk in and it turns into a, you know, a giant monitor. It can have the weather, it can have directions to the, um, you know, around the building. It can give you right. the menu for what's for right. lunch today. Right. Um, so all these kinds of technologies are kind of converging and changing the user experience out there. So it's a really exciting time. I, you know, it's, as you're describing that, of course, I'm thinking Minority Report and I get a chance to talk to so many technologists and evangelists of technology. And once upon a time, I would think to myself, how is all of this gonna to come together? And I, I think it's exactly what you described, which is um, in your world, the people moving world, how do we create a user experience and deliver it through um, technology, right? I mean, that's really what it's about and deliver it to their smartphone even in even in my world the data center world um, our customers that use our systems or um, have their systems within our systems they don't want to get on a computer or a desktop anymore they want to be on their mobile device to have that experience I mean absolutely I mean and, and we're all on the move you know more and more right. so you know you're, you might have your laptop in your arm taking it to a meeting but it's yeah. rarely on and part of your you right. know, interaction when you're on the move like that so right. Um, you know, and for us, it's it's how do how do you do it in a way too that's not too invasive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, obviously, people that want to interact that way, they need to opt in, mm -hmm. and you got to give them the opportunity to do that. And mm -hmm. and so we have to. What we're seeing is kind of a change in kind of how we interact with with customers that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it used to be that our big big customers were you know the the building owners and mm -hmm. maybe the big national accounts that have lots of buildings all over the country or um, our, even architects, you know, that kind of, you know, build and own their own buildings. But now we're seeing such a shift to, to help them do a better job and to make their customers happy, then we are an extension of them, you know, through our technology. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it, it's really exciting to kind of see that transition come. Mm -hmm. um, and we are doing so much in that space. I see, um, I see a lot of conversations and listen to a lot of conversations about this idea of smart cities. And um, I was talking to somebody not long ago, they're on the, the AI side of this. So you deploy sensors throughout a metropolitan area, and that could be anywhere from traffic patterns, where to park, 
Um, it could be um, building system integration that are telling you what's, you know, what are the different components of the city, how the city services running, all, all this different stuff. How, does an organization like yours, do you ever, is there a, is there a vision down the road to tie into, we have these sensors available. So in other words, instead of just, not just going to, I as a user of TK Elevator on my mobile phone as an individual, do you ever see a time where it might be tied to a larger grid? So for example, the city of Atlanta, I go to Dragon Con most every year. And if there's one thing that drives me crazy is that those elevators are so busy, I can't get on or whatever. Um, parking is hard to find a parking spot. And if I have an infrastructure, if I choose to opt in with my smart car, my smartphone, my smart whatever, and it can inform me, well, here's the traffic over here, or you can have an experience like this over here. Do you see any integration with that? I mean, I think that's a great point, and, and we absolutely do. I mean, okay. we, we, we see, I mean, there's already the, the smart building concepts out there now, and we're doing a lot of integration with those and, and all the different building systems. Right. I mean, we, today we even have the elevators that uh, we have technology in our elevators that our customers can interact with such that when, if you come in on the weekend, for instance, mm -hmm. the building's typically shut down, the AC's turned right. off or whatever, you go to your floor, we, it, with the building properly equipped, we can have the lights activated, we can have the air conditioning activated, we can have everything activated in the building to present you with that experience. Mm -hmm. I think the next extension is is understanding, okay, where there are people going and how are buildings and, and the grid, as you mm -hmm. said, interacting. Mm -hmm. And can we make it almost like a ways like experience yeah. to where you you say, hey, I'm going to Dragon Con and it'll say, hey, this parking, you know, this is parking decks available and the elevator, this is the right. building access you should use, all of that, because right. all of these systems are talking to each right. other. In real time. I in mean, real time. That's the key is, how do I know in real time, um, and there's tricky, it, it's tricky because as, big an optimist as I am, I am also sometimes skeptical of what are people doing with this data? Is it is there high integrity around it? Meaning there's a great chain of custody, nobody's gonna um, misuse it and misappropriate it. But presuming that that's all uh, resolved and secure, it is, um, I love the idea of being able to know where my daughters are all driving now, which is a terrifying concept to me. And I want them to be able to drive into the city. Um, and I want to know here, you know, they got to their destination and this is where they're moving throughout the city. And when it's time to find each other, we can do that pretty easily. And this, this, the quote unquote city is going to make it easy for them to get to their, Hey, look, don't go down this street, go down this street. Here's, here's the traffic flow or the traffic pattern or the, the kiosk that's available to serve. You know, it's not uncommon when we go down there, you go to these six restaurants on this block and there's lines out the door. You go one block over and there's no waiting line. And so to be able to integrate my smart devices with those smart systems seems to me to be, uh, you know, enhancing the user experience. Well, I think it's absolutely where it's going. And I mean, in the the speed with which it's getting there is, is quite mind boggling yeah. in, a, in a way as well. I, you know, I think for us, for me as a CIO, um, you know, kind of what keeps us up at night and keeps us challenges is, is how, how do you how do you protect all of this stuff? How do you manage that data? And it's yeah. it's a new thing for a lot of companies. I mean, there's manufacturing companies like us. We're traditionally not so worried about that consumer data component of our business or data privacy and all right. that. And it's definitely something that is now um, in that forefront and near yeah. and dear to us. So yeah. it's a that's a big shift. How do you approach the board with that? That I mean, security's already always been part of your world, right. but now it's sort of to your point. N nobody makes doorbells anymore; they make software that's deployed through a right. ringing device on somebody's door. Right? They don't make a people mover necessarily. I mean, that's the mechanism by which you deliver your technology and this user experience. How, how is it when you go to the board or to your leadership group and say, "Look, especially in light of the news here recently of these." Um, ransomware events and you know they're they've always been happening they're just higher profile now yeah how do you capture their imagination and and have them get on board with you try to solve that problem well, i mean most of the time it really starts as a, a risk discussion you mm -hmm. know and managing risk in the business and that's 
what most boards are, are most interested in. Mm-hmm. You know, they're 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 looking at risks to the P and L and the right. numbers you're trying to produce, but also they're looking at other risks, those outside risks, right. risk to your uh, reputation, risk to your customer base, and 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 then compliance risk and others. And so it, it's just another one of those things. And it's what we do is we we couple that risk with with the enablement and the growth of our business and mm-hmm. say, okay, this is something that you know we have to deal with. We have to. We have to get out in front of, mm-hmm. and typically a you know a, a good well w- well working board um, really understands that, mm-hmm. and, and they're they're really promoting hey let's get out in front of it let's let's not be reactionary to it you mm-hmm. know because certainly um, that happens in the in the security world right. you know you don't want to be reacting to an incident yeah um, you'd writing ra- a you'd, check and yeah, then reacting yeah, yeah you'd rather be out there proactive trying to say okay how do I manage the risk right. and you know and how do I how do I enable and grow this business in a in a safe secure way and um, while I'm protecting my interests. Well, I'd love to have you on my show where we could talk about the people moving business in particular, but um, that's a conversation for another day. But if you're, for someone who's not familiar with your industry, I mean, we're familiar with it in that we use escalators every day. We use elevators. Um, I love the people movers in airports um, only because I feel like I'm the $6 million man as I walk down those things because I'm moving at the uh, speed of light. What would surprise us? What technology that you're working on that would surprise people that aren't close to that industry? Please tell me you've got drones to fly people (laughs) over. Well, we... uh... Um, I, I think, you know, it's funny because when I got into the business too, I think you, you, everybody kind of tends to take elevators and those types of systems for granted. Yeah. Uh, uh, certainly up until they break down yeah, or something about happens. Say, yeah. Until uh, the escalator uh, becomes a stair. Yeah. yeah. But what you don't really realize is it, it truly is a transportation system and there's mm-hmm. a lot of technology behind the scenes and the things that, that we do to try to, um, keep those keep those systems running and operational and safe mm-hmm. um, and to enable our technicians um, to have a to, to afford our customers and buildings kind of a, a seamless experience mm-hmm. right because um, there's nothing more frustrating when you try to go down three stories and the escalator is broken right. and okay here we go trucking down the stairs with right. our suitcase and stuff so but there is a lot of surprising technology in there and we we were kind of at the forefront of that about three years ago with a a major iot program where we we have we have sensors and monitors and in the in our elevators and and in different buildings and you know we just pick up so many data points Mm -hmm. on that and one of the things that we realized right out of the gate is we we saw some inefficiencies even in our control software so and we could make the elevator perform better, um, more smartly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, it, and also in a way that would reduce energy. And so a lot of elevators we have now almost have a zero energy footprint because they can gain energy, you know, coming down wow. um, that they need going up. And, right. and, and so, you know, we just saw so many opportunities uh, that the technology pre- presented to us that we weren't thinking about. I mean, we were thinking about how to keep the elevator system running. Right. Um, and we started to see ways to optimize the software, ways to reduce energy, right. you know, and then we got to the old customer experience piece. Okay, we're, we're now able to see all these systems work and interact with the elevator this way. Now we can look at it and say, oh, how do we open up to the consumer, the person riding the elevator? So we, we know who you are. We know what floors you're going to. We know you might, you know, what certain time of day you might be going to lunch. You want to right. see the lunch menu in the cafeteria. Right. We want to see the news, the weather, all those kinds of things. So a more tailored experience so now it's interacting with you right. in a personal way yeah so a lot of deep technology behind the scenes there well i want to stretch our 15 minutes to an hour but i can't do that i would say that for my podcast but that is a um i absolutely hadn't thought about that which is interesting because i've got somebody coming on my show in the not too distant future that is essentially building giant elevators outside of metropolitan areas with blocks of inert material so that when there is excess energy on the grid, it stacks all these blocks up almost like a big giant battery in a way it's storing energy so that when we need more capacity on the grid, it then starts dropping the blocks, creating kinetic energy and delivering energy back to the grid. And in a way, that's exactly what you're describing. I'm going to use these moving, um, energy sources essentially to either make them more efficient or maybe in the future use it to help power a facility as we use it to you know serve our customers 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing what's going on out there and the, and the pace of innovation that we're seeing, yeah. you know, not only in our business, but, you know, all around us. So yeah. It's, it's exciting brilliant. times. Very exciting times. Well, Dwight, thank you for coming on this show. I really appreciate it. No pressure. We are going to go ahead when we broadcast this. We're going to take the score that everybody shot out there today. I know it's a scramble, but uh, don't screw it up while you're out there. All right, I'm going to go low. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> Dwight Wilcox, thanks for joining us on the QTS Experience. We appreciate it. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you.